Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And now we've got the press kits out of the way, it's time for me to start looking at the actual uh, motherboards beyond it. I've already done videos on the uh, ROG Maximus Hero, which came in a press kit, and I've also done the uh, MSI Meg Ace, which came in a press kit. But I'm going to start with the top of the pack as far as Republic of Gamers is concerned, and that is the ROG Maximus Z890 Extreme. If you do like what you see in the video today, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, even just a little comment underneath. It does help with the algorithm. Now, we don't know any prices yet. Asus is still being fairly quiet about it. But one of the things I do need to say is we were expecting the uh, X870 uh, Hero to be about £750. And that was the price that we were all thinking of. And it came in at 550 Now, I still don't know, but I just want to give you that kind of balance. So we would instantly be expecting this to be 1000 or £1,100 pounds. We don't know, it might be a bit less. It's never going to be cheap though, because it is the extreme. And with the extreme, it does come with an awful, awful lot of hardware and uh, componentry supported. I'm going to talk to you around about the board as well. I'm going to give you a really, really good look around it. I'm going to talk to you about all the VRMs because there are a lot of power phases around here. And we've got a screen here that even though I'm not allowed to show you the board officially powered up, I have got a magic way that I can turn the screen on so that you can see it. Uh, and when you do see it, it is configurable within the actual software and everything as well. Now, a higher stance so that we can have a look inside the box. Because it's an extreme, we are expecting much more than normal. And uh, in normal, you do get your ROG card, which does give you a uh, download opportunity on the back. You've got your driver USB. Do remember, though, that you do need to update drivers. So you don't necessarily have to um, just go back to the originals all the time. You do get a very handy screwdriver which is kind of cool these things i don't know why but they get sent to me by asus in these boxes and then they never leave again they're never in the box afterwards <laughs> um, this is your dim dot two slot there's like a fifth um, memory slot on the motherboard i'll show you this attached in a minute but it's effectively got a couple of uh, nvme slots on it <coughs> So I will show you that connected in a little minute. That's making me think of Miss Braiding. Little minute. Uh, you do have your toolless or quick release, however you want to put it. Wi-Fi, it's magnetic, it will stick to your case as long as you've not got an aluminium case. That is in there. Also, now, over in the top corner, what do we have in here? We have a bottle opener. And then you also get a uh, add-on bracket that you can fix a fan to if you want to add some extra cooling. Um, overclockers of you out there might want to do it. If anybody else out there thinks they need to, I'm going to say that you probably don't. <coughs> Inside here, we have a sticker pack. Ta -da. And then one of the things that is always kind of handy, I think they should send these out in the reviewer's guides is the breakdown on the board so that you can see where everything is and it's all color coded so you can work out what's going on. It does actually make life loads easier. I would love to publish that in my uh, reviews to give people a, a better idea. I've been asking Asus for better versions of them for a long time and I never get them. Anyway, in the actual box of tricks down the side, this is going to be the accessories that you're mainly looking for. You have a three pin ARGB extension there. Then we have a selection of thermal probes here. There are three in that bag in total. There's another ARGB extension here. Oh, there's another one here, but this one is a fan out. So you go from one into three with this cable. I've only ever really seen these cables uh, handed out by Cooler Master. So the fact that we've got a ROG one is quite cool. Uh, then you do have a PWM fan splitter. Goes from one into three. Then there are four in total SATA cables. And they are braided ones as well, which is really nice. I'm just going to pop one out so that you can... Have a look because that makes all the difference. It's not just a normal SATA cable. There we go. 
So there you can see that's braided, or they are braided because there, there's two there, and there are four in total. And then the final thing is another three um, into one PWM splitter, which is all very handy because I use them all the time. So that is our haul from inside the box. Let's have a look at the board itself. Okay, so the board itself, and uh, it is both big and heavy. All of this around the outside of the board here, I will say instantaneously, that is not plastic. That is big aluminium, and you can see it's really not thin, and it's really not light either. It's quite difficult for me to uh, lift up. It's definitely going to be one that when you build it in your case, you're going to want to make sure you put all the screws in. Um, I did say to you about the DIM2 slot. So you've got one, two, three, four uh, DRAM headers, slots, whatever you want to call them here. These have all got the Nitro Path technology as well. So what Asus have done is they've shortened the pins inside the uh, DRAM slots. And just by shortening the pi pins, it means there is less noise, which means the uh, signal for the memory is better. That means you can run it at higher speeds. It's a tick box, tick box, tick box. It's all good. There's nothing about uh, Nitro Path that's bad. They're gold plated and everything. But anyway, the fifth one on the end is this extra add-on card here that you can run if you want. And effectively, this is a bolt-in for two further uh, NVMEs. Now uh, the only thing I will say with this is this does give a very big sort of like wind block or airflow block for your uh, DRAM slots but it's going to depend on your configuration. I'm also going to say that as nice as this looks I'm probably going to use my board stuff more so that then when it's up here even if you had four DIM slots populated this is going to look a bit out of place. Uh, and I've, one thing I've always kind of wanted Asus to do is have a blank for this. So a very short piece that just kind of goes in here to cover this bit up so you don't have the bare slot. I expect some of you wizards out there with 3D printers could make something of this up just to be able to go in here, get it on Etsy. I'm sure people would buy it. I certainly would. Anyway, into our normal layout for looking around a motherboard. Well, there's two eight pins, as you would expect, and you can see the metal shielding around the outside as well, also as we would expect. Then when we come across the top of the motherboard, we'll come in for a nice deep look, and you can see we've got CPU fan, CPU optional fan, and then this is our chassis fan one here. Then you can also see that we have some voltage pickups along the top for those of you out there that are going to use this board for overclocking. I'm going to suggest though that if you are looking at this as just an overclocking board to just go on a test bench, then maybe have a look at the Apex as well because it might actually be better for you in the long run. You can see our poster readout. I really like these uh, power and reset buttons hidden within the metal work because this is metal and there's a fair amount of it as well. But then down the side, as we slide down, you can see the writing on the top here. So you've got ARGB, so that's an ARGB header there. You do need to use the uh, ASUS header for it though. There's a cable in the box. Then you've got Water Pump Plus. It will run at full speed. This is a really good header to use if you just want to plug a fan in and you want it to be at 100% because it will almost always be running at 100% unless you changed it in the software. Then you've got a uh, chassis fan here they're obviously both four pins, but then you've got your 24 pin um, ATX header and all those pins are solid. When we come down, it's actually kind of nice that the uh, two USB 3.2s, you can actually see the difference. So you've got a 10G and then a 20G here. Then you've also got, it says PD power, and I'm going to assume that is for charging for these um, so that you can have uh, higher wattages put through. And then underneath, you have USB 3 5G, and it says it all here. You've got your SATA headers, you've got another USB-C uh, 5G, and then you've got a RADFAN header down at the bottom on here. Now, when we get to the bottom of the motherboard, there is an awful lot going on. There are a lot of switches, there are a lot of buttons. So I'm going to zoom you right in so that you can see, and then we've got water pump 2 here, front panel header, then you've got um, 
safe boot, you can actually save these settings in the BIOS to be whatever you want, the start of your overclock or something like that. Uh, the retry button, this can be if it uh, hangs on start up, you can hit the retry button and then it doesn't count against, because sometimes when you restart it too many times, windows get funny, this avoids this. Then you've got your BIOS switch here, you've got PCI Express mode here, this one is your pause, uh, this one is slow mode, this one is saying RSVD 1 and 2 here. If we come along, there are a couple of um, internal USB 2s, then you have your ARGB down at the bottom. Now I'm just looking because it's just dawned on me. Oh, actually, no, there was one at the top. So these are the only two normal ARGB headers. The one at the top is the ASUS proprietary one, but you do have a cable then to be able to span that out to the normal ARGB. And then we've got uh, BCL, SOC BCL clock uh, plus and minus. So you can increase it with one remove it with the other and then you've got a base clock plus or minus here. This actually means that you can make frequency changes on the fly. Uh, it also means that you can boot into Windows and then basically overclock with a switch while you are at it. Um, I've used those with uh, great success with other brands in the past and it's actually a really nice touch that we've seen uh, Asus bring something like that into the mix. Now I'm going to remove the large section it's only four screws but there is a lot of uh, material here because this is full aluminium as well with a fair amount of weight to it and as I remove it it then tells me I've not done this one enough okay so we remove that out you can see that there are three in total um, heat pads on it so we have one two three there up at the top here I can also release this and then this has a uh, vapor chamber inside it as well for the hottest of the PCR Express 5 drive should you need it. I'm going to say though that if you've got a really really hot PCR Express 5 drive you probably should have just bought a Sabrent one instead because you then you would have had no problems whatsoever but we do need to remember one two three four five, six total NVMEs available on the board. Um, I'm also going to say though, that if you think about it, it's a, meant to be like a mega overclocking board, uh, and then it's got loads of NVMEs. So I think what we just need to think about the extreme as is the best that they can possibly do, rather than it being an overclocker's board now, because I think for me, if I was an overclocker, I would be buying the Apex, which I will be showing you by the way, because I do have it here. I can't get those screws started, so I'm just going to move on to do the other bits, because up here, there's a lot going on up here. Now, I have to have a bit of paper to be able to say this, but there are 24 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 power phases around the uh, outside of that board. Now, the 24 are all 110 amp. The plus one and the first plus two are 90 amp, and then the second plus two is 80 amp. And I'll put a little pop-up on the screen so that you can see the breakdown of the Infineons and the exact numbers and all of that stuff. And, uh, but the power on this is quite mad, to the point it even comes down around the bottom of the CPU socket here and then goes all the way up and round. It is absolutely jam-packed in there and it is absolutely crackers i'm really looking forward to seeing if it makes any difference in the future with uh overclocking and that sort of thing though now these are thunderbolt 5 not thunderbolt 4 that is something very very critical for me to point out we've also got the bios and um clear and uh, flashback you do get an external hdmi then you've got a selection of USB-Cs here, 20G, 10G, 10G. These are all 10G USB as well, and all up here, so there's a lot of uh, connectivity. You've got 2.5G Ethernet, but you've also got a 10G Ethernet as well. That's much rarer than you would think within the um, uh, Z890 ecosystem. Um, what we've also got is uh, Wi-Fi 7. Uh, there's the... Um, uh, the Supremo FX has got an ALC4082 codec, which has got the ESS ES9219 quad DAC 
built in as well. So they've not really cut any corners anywhere. I know the connectivity isn't um, a maze balls, but you've got a line out, you've got a mic in, and then you've got your spidiff. So there's many, many lots of uh, possibilities for you. And if I'm honest, I normally just use one line out anyway. So keeping it on point and trying to keep things light. And there we go, there is your screen. Now, it is a proper screen. It's not like some of the other ones where there's just um, some plastic behind there and it's kind of protruding through it. That is an actual screen. Uh, there are options for you to be able to come up, customize this within the software. I would really like to think that you could put little mini videos up there and uh, GIFs and all of that sort of stuff. But I said with the X870 stuff that it felt like it was a bit wasted up in that area and there was room to put screens on. So I'm actually really glad to see that they finally have done it with this. And the colours are all really nice. The animation is really nice. It's a very nice way to finish it off. And on that note, I'm going to hope that's a nice way for us to finish off. I'm going to thank you for tuning in. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment. And I would love to hear your feedback about this underneath.